aspects of human resource uh, management in today's module, which comprises of two hours. Uh, so we will be covering introduction to human resource management and managing global human resource management, strategic human resource management as well. So uh, to start with, uh, let's start with introduction to human resource management. So it's, it's a big, big question uh, in today's uh, world about what is human resource management. However, we interact daily with human beings on, uh, on, at every level. Uh, I mean, be it home, be it office, be it on the roads. And we are dealing with human beings. And it is, uh, it is one, uh, you know, uh, uh, breed <laughs> which possess, uh, you know, uh, the power of emotional strength and intellectual strength. So when it comes to organizations, it becomes really difficult to manage or, you know, it becomes a bit tasking to manage humans because every human being is different. The perspective is different. So today we will give you, a, I'll give you a brief introduction about human resource management. So to go back, uh, why and, uh, I mean, uh, the, with this following example, I'll try and express or explain it to you why human resource management is crucial and uh, why did this uh, this field of study became so important in any management, uh, you know, uh, sub subject that you talk about. So, I mean, if you go through the slide, you'll, uh, I mean, I've tried to depict a few things like we talk about telecom. So uh, I remember when we were kids, uh, we had uh, landline phones at our place. And uh, uh, when I was maybe in my fourth standard, it was then that my dad applied for a BSNL landline and we got a mobile, uh, we, we got a landline then. So uh, if you go, if you see the structure of the, or the design of the landline phones also differed uh, with its, you know, uh, added features that came into it later on. So we initially had, landlines which was kept at one place then we went up to uh, a, a set you know um, a cordless phone wherein you could take the phone around the house and talk to anybody and do your work as well and then uh, pagers came into existence from pagers we went up to dial phones or mobile phones where we had keypads and now we are talking about iphones so uh, if you really think uh, the, the, the industry has changed dramatically because of the continuous innovation, the continuous uh, product development that has happened in the past 10 years. And uh, honestly, if you, it's a research data that whatever technology we are using, using currently has been innovated or developed in the past four years. So it's a changing world and everything is changing around us. So innovation comes becomes a very important factor, a very crucial factor in current uh, industry or in the current uh, system. So when we talk about innovation, who does the innovation? Innovation is basically done by humans. When we talk about our grandparents, the major work that they used to do when they used to work uh, was, was you know, uh, it was laborious work. They used to work with their hands, even if, I mean, putting, bringing one thing from one place and placing it somewhere else or collaborating two different things. Or even somebody who was an accountant used to use pen and paper or a, uh, or a big bahi khata was kept at our offices and people used to write on that. But now things have changed. Now you and I, uh, in the past 15 years, are not doing laborious work. We are, our major work is focused on thinking. We, I mean, we are being paid for thinking or coming up with new ideas. Uh, I mean, if you talk about uh, laborious work, yes, People used to go back and used to say that I want these many pieces ready by, you know, in next two hours. And it was ready. But today, if somebody comes and tells us that I want an idea within an hour, it is impossible. Because uh, ideas cannot be generated in any, within any specific time frame. It, it, it is basically a state of mind. Uh, it again gives me, a, uh, I mean, I would again like to add on an example from the industry, which is a very famous example, that once uh, Colgate went approx, uh, you know, uh, had a very difficult time to increase its sales in the market. So everybody from in the organization was very upset about the fact that the sales is not increasing. And they entered India and uh, 
they wanted to increase the sales of their business. So they tried various marketing techniques. They adopted various other strategies to you know, improvise on the sales figure. However, there was one workman from their uh, floor who went up to the management and then he came up with a very brilliant idea. He said, and that time uh, they used to use aluminum tubes for filling the toothpaste. And that time he went back and he said that it's very simple. You just increase the usage of the product and automatically when the usage increases, uh, the demand increases. So everybody was surprised at how is it possible. So he said, just, you know, um, increase the size of the nozzle from which the product comes out. And with that minutest of, you know, increase in the size of the nozzle, uh, there's actually the increase the sales figure. That was a very uh, innovative thought process that came across from a small workman from the you know, workshop. So innovation basically is something that humans can do. No other uh, aspect. I mean, if you talk about machine, if you talk about money, if you talk about, you know, uh, anything pertaining to any business structure, your uh, IT infrastructure that cannot solely think. Thinking is a capability that ha that humans are blessed with. So Moving ahead, when we talk about any business, the, there are four major contributions: money, material, and machine. So, as I said, out of these four major con contributing factors, men is one of the most difficult aspect to be controlled because every human being is different. The kind of thought process, the kind of uh, belief system, the value system, everything differs. The emotional strength. Every human being is unique. It's, it's different. So that's the reason uh, human resource uh, management came into existence. Because you cannot treat men as animals or men as machine. Men's are men's. So human beings need to be treated as human beings. So, so let's try and define human resource management, keeping in uh, uh, keeping into the, the examples that I've recently shared with you at back of a mind and try and understand what HRM is. So I've tried to, you know, uh, bifurcate this word into human resource management as three different words. So by human, we mean the skilled workforce that is available in any organization. And resources refers to the limited availability of a resource. And because in today's context, when we talk about why human resources or why humans or why, uh, you know, any uh, particular uh, candidate is difficult to be identified because the technology is changing. When we talk about IT, uh, initially, I remember people were behind, you know, C, C++, COBOL. But with time, the technology changed. Then came the phase of Linux or Java or Oracle. Today, people are talking about big data, MongoDB, R, SAS. So things have constantly changed in the past 10 years. And it is very difficult for anybody to keep one's, oneself abreast to the upcoming or the you know latest technology in the industry. So uh, I mean, that's the reason humans or you, I mean, one find it difficult to identify the right candidate for a position because even candidates, to identify candidates is very difficult in today's scenario because of the changing environment. Everything changes within, you know, a, a very short span of time. So that's the reason uh, we, we say that human resources is also a scarce resources because uh, be, depending on the necessity or the de demand of a particular skill set, uh, you need to search that skill set. And at times you do not find it because the, you, you fall short of that skill set in the market. So that's the reason human resources is, uh, I mean, is also termed to be scarce or it's, it's the availability is limited. And management, by management, we refer to the proper utilization of this, whatever availability that we have in the market. So management is the art of getting things done by other people in the organization is what is defined in our books. And human resource management is exactly managing humans or the workforce in any organization to attain your business objectives. So um, if you go about by, you know, uh, 
what other authors have said. According to Michael Armstrong, you see in 2006, he mentioned that human resource management is defined as a strategic and coherent approach to the management of an organization's most valued assets, the people working there who individually and collectively contributes to the achievement of its objectives. So when we actually take this example, we can see that Michael Armstrong gave good emphasis on strategic and coherent approach because it is it isn't that you know there is a standard uh, or a standard way of managing any uh, human resource you have to have some strategy in place and your strategies are going to be purely driven by the business objectives that then that the organization has so i mean to make keep it simple i mean we, you can go through this uh, definition once again later on however to keep it simple Let's stick to a very simple you know, definition of human resource management, which is it's a formal system devised for the management of people within an organization. So when you look at this pyramid, this pyramid is, is divided into three levels, which is operational HR, tactical HR, and strategic HR. And in major organizations, uh, the HR is, you know, uh, is uh, probably confined into operational HRs because what is an operational HR? Operational HR takes, uh, takes care of time management, leave management, maternity leaves, your paternity leaves, um, your medical facilities or your uh, group insurance policies. All these things comes under operational HR. Or, I mean, your disciplinary actions has to be taken. That also takes, I mean, looks into, goes into operational HRs. So th this comprises of a major chunk of your a daily HR activity, which was again initially called as personal admin administration and uh, which is still prevalent. However, in Indian context, organizations are trying to move their HR from operational HR to tactical or strategic HR, which is of prime, prime importance. And when we talk about tactical HR, the next level of HR was wherein you know, compensation management came into picture, wherein your uh, uh, performance management systems, your competency mapping, assessment centers came into existence, and succession planning came into existence. And a more refined way of doing it went into the next level, which is of strategic HR, wherein succession planning was taken up to the next level, and your learning and development programs came into existence. And these are our core leadership uh, but, uh, you know, uh, candidates or employees in our organization. And we need to impart them these many trainings so that they can actually move up to the next level. So that is particularly, you know, uh, HRM. When we talk about this, this, all these three aspects actually comprises of, uh, you know, in, in any organization. So what is the objective of a human resource management? The, uh, the prime objective is like, you know, any human resource department of any organization should be goal oriented. What do we understand? Goal orientation means that uh, every organization has, uh, you know, a, a specific objective to be achieved. It has a specific goal to be achieved. The vision, the mission statement is your goals and objectives. And even for an each goal is derived from the vision and mission of the organ. So when we talk about you know, hitting 500 crores. So how are you going to hit 500 crores in two, two years or five years down the line? So there is a strategy that has to be adopted. And human resource is a part of that strategy, wherein how are we, how many candidates to be pulled up from the market? What, what product are we talking about? What skill set is required? How many people are required? What is going to be the budget of hiring these many people? That is basically goal orientation orientation so enhancing and utilizing second is enhancing and utilizing the skills and abilities of the workforce ex efficiently so um, i mean when we talk about kpos and bpo sector when they came into india i'll give you this example primarily because uh, when we talk about infosys when we talk about tcs they take up projects from international market and they have a set or a skill set of people in a bunch of people that are hired and kept in their organization so many times you might have heard this term called bench. So uh, many candidates are also kept in bench so that whenever a project is, uh, you know, uh, taken from any, uh, I mean, from abroad, so these people are actually ready. This is readily available with us to be 
you know, the, and they can start working on that project from day one. So there is no lag time in between. So this is basically a perfect example of how to utilize the abilities of the workforce ex efficiently. Or when we come to know, and when we when we in such organizations, downsizing is a very prominent phrase that we continuously hear. So to tackle the downsizing effect, what these organizations did was they have many projects that are in pipeline. And they also know that when a project is going to end. So they tactically align the people who are going to, who are working on a certain project and the project is about to end to a new project. So this is basically, uh, again, second example of how uh, HR departments in various organizations in today's world efficiently utilize their manpower and in return also take care of their HR branding, also take care of the organizational's uh, goodwill in the market. Because if you continuously pick, pick, pick people from the market and then you downsize and you ask the people to leave, also great, gives a about the organization in the market. So it becomes difficult to identify new resources. So to manage all sorts of things, HR tries and utilizes such, uh, you know, their current resources in such a manner. Infu third is infusing trained and motivated first workforce in the organization. So, I mean, today, uh, when we talk about in this constantly changing world, it is very difficult or it is near impossible to actually get people on board and let them get trained. I mean, we cannot, we don't have that much of time to let the person get trained in six months time or seven months time. We maximum can give a person, you know, one to three months time, depending on the criticality or the technicality of a particular job role to get adjusted to the project. Uh, so it is the responsibility of the HR to get the, you know, trained and motivated workforce from the management. So you have to constantly infuse the system with train and motivated workforce. Fourth is employee relations, employee satisfaction and self-actualization. By employee relation, we un understand that, um, I mean, uh, to, be, to, to give you an example, again, HR, any HR personnel or any HR executive in any organization has to, uh, you know, <clears throat> I mean, uh, we always say that it's, it's, it's a role of a confidant and a confident person. By a confidant, we means uh, we mean to say that many a times employees come to us and we they discuss their issues or their problems with their bosses or with their colleagues or with the team. So at that point of time, an HR has to be a confidant. I mean, a confidant is a person who will not express or who would not go around and talk about an issue that has been shared with that person um, in the organization. In the, the person keeps the information and shares only that particular piece of information which is to be shared, not the every bit. Because while discussing, and since we've, I've already, always been harping upon the fact that humans are emotional, while expressing feelings, uh, he, employees tend to share an emotional, uh, you know, through their emotional touch as well. And at times they might uh, make certain statements which are not, uh, which is not apt for uh, to be discussed openly. So as an HR, I need to confirm, I mean, I need to understand the uh, emotional trauma or the emotional, up, up, you know, upheaval that the employee is going through and take the information, deduce it and use the only in use information which is re required to be used, not the entire uh, thing. And also a confident person because as an HR, I'm also supposed to go back and talk to the employee if the employee is wrong and in some way. And this particular, you know, tactical way or tactful way of managing employees is called employee relationship. And by employee satisfaction, we mean by the we mean that you know any employee needs to be satisfied with the work work he's doing or with the pay package that he's getting or the incentives that he's getting. Because if he's not satisfied, he would not be able to. Put his and if he's not able to put 100% then he's actually killing those many man hours that you are being paying him for so here human resource management comes into picture wherein uh, a human um, I mean an HR manager or an HR executive needs to understand whether an employee is satisfied or not and if it is 
not, then what are the reasons and addressing those reasons. Um, going into the next uh, uh, point is the objective of HRM of maintaining work-life balance. Uh, <clears throat> I've, I've actually seen there was a trend uh, in organizations wherein people just to satisfy their bosses or just to satisfy the uh, line of manager, they used to stay back and uh, we used to appreciate, I mean, not we, but there are many uh, managers who used to appreciate that. However, that is not the right way of doing it because it is uh, the amount of time that you spend within the organization doesn't prove your performance. You know, your performance actually uh, comes into picture with the amount of deliver deliverables that you've delivered on time. So that should be your performance measurement, not, you know, staying back late in the office. So... And HR comes into picture wherein you need to maintain your work-life balance, leave, getting leave policies, getting uh, such leave policies into uh, you know existence in an organization that actually helps in achieving organization's objectives as well as maintaining the work-life balance of an employee. You cannot ask an employee to come to work uh, for all 30 days and give him no week offs and just pay him the money because end of the day the employee is going to get exhausted and when he gets exhausted he's going to avail his medical leaves if required so that uh, practice should also be controlled and is controlled by the human resource department uh, the second uh, last uh, objective of HRM is communicating the HR policies. When we talk about HR policies, uh, there are various HR policies, administrative HR policies or uh, tactical HR policies, which needs to be communicated uh, to the employees time and again. And that uh, is the role of HR department. The last but not the least is corporate social responsibility. When we talk about corporate social responsibility, this is a word which has come into existence in the past 15 years in a big, big way. Because when we talk about uh, revenue generation from the market or getting business from the market, it is also the responsibility of organizations to giving it back to, uh, to the people or the cons consumers in return. And that is where your social responsibility comes into picture. You might have seen ads of various brands saying that if you buy uh, this particular product of our brand, we spend this much of, of amount into education of a uh, girl, child, or upliftment of rural areas. So these are small steps into corporate social responsibility. However, there are many others as well wherein, uh, I, mean, in, I mean, there are various organizations who take up a particular a village and takes care of their basic amenities of electricity, pure water, good water supply and all that. So that is again a part of human resource uh, department. Uh, coming back to HR policies, what do we understand by HR policies? Uh, See, uh, it is not possible that uh, without any framework, without any system, you drive the human resource department or you drive your employees in the organization. It would be impossible because then uh, a major, con I mean, we, we all would be into, uh, you know, biases. And uh, that's the reason each of policies became important because there has to be a set rule or a set way of managing people. So he, HR Human resource policies are formal rules and procedures that dictate how certain matters should be addressed in the workplace, including employee rights and duties. So when you go through this definition, you are, you will understand that it is a, it, here the human bias is being taken out from the system by implementing processes and procedures which will help, uh, you know, uh, making a work uh, making a better workplace and taking i mean and this would also help in taking care of day to day problems or issues or you know any um, because humans when we interact not all of us are compatible with each other we have friends and we have people whom with whom we are not comfortable with so in organizations also we have a mix of people so there are people who can gel really well and there are people who cannot so taking care of all sorts of uh, you know uh, differences in uh, working style, in understanding uh, the HR policies becomes very important. So for me, probably uh, coming 10 minutes late might not be an issue, but for my boss, it might be an issue. Uh, and to take care of that, 
uh, I mean, a proper time management or time keeping system is in place, wherein a person has to log in at 9.30 means he has to log in at 9.30 and there is a grace period of five, five minutes. Okay, agreed. There's a grace period. So uh, the manager is also consoled that, okay, there is a grace period given by the HR itself. So I cannot do much about it. But yes, if the employee comes regularly late by 10, 15 minutes, I can go back to the HR and tell that, you know, you have to speak to this particular uh, candidate or particular employee from my team so that is uh, basically where your hr policies comes into picture because it helps in minimizing conflicts between various departments or amongst employees or amongst uh, i mean manager and an employee relationship is maintained so i hope uh, this clarifies hr policy uh, the next is the importance of hr policy it addresses specific workplace is issues as i mentioned uh, your leave policy is important to take care of leave because if the, it wasn't there then it would be abruptly taken by anybody and that is not the ideal way, so way to take care i mean to take leaves because uh, it is quite i mean uh, business need is of prime importance and if there is a business need we need people to manage that particular aspect so uh, if there would have been no leave policy people would have taken leave anytime or whenever they wanted to or there might be people who would have taken more than uh, you know assigned leaves or people who can who people who would have been coming into work and you know on a daily basis and not taking leaves so to take care of such workplace issues uh, hr policy becomes of prime importance uh, it helps in um, communication and, and and building understanding between managers and their subordinates i've just given you an example about that the next is it gives employees access to valuable resources that they that help foster their professional growth because nowadays hr has also started uh, doing uh, learn, getting into learning and development and developing a particular department called learning and development wherein employees get trained on various aspects like soft skills behavioral skills functional skills so uh, the hr policies help because there is a certain number of uh, hours that every employee need to spend in taking up certain uh, hr related or training pertaining to their job role so this becomes a very valuable resource and second there are even organization who uh, you know uh, i mean they, they sponsor candidates for specific uh, programs so that they they can upskill themselves the employees can upskill themselves which would in return help the organization so such policies uh, help an employee to access resources which he wouldn't have in a normal situation it also helps in creating a positive work environment. When you have HR policies in place, uh, there is no biasness, there is no scope of deviation, and there is transparency and clarity in the minds of uh, the employee that we are not being fooled. And if there is a policy for me, there is the, the same policy applies for the other person sitting next to me. So that's that that helps an employee in understanding that the workplace is good and I can work here. So it creates a positive work environment so there are different types of hr policies that is and uh, i mean if you see this circle this the circle talks about the various hr functions that is appraising planning staffing developing motivating managing change maintaining relationships and evaluating so when we talk about these functions all the policies are driven by these functions so there are originated policies policies which are simply adopted on you know uh, because of uh, the basic uh, laws and rules of the ground. So if we talk about India, there are labor laws uh, wherein you have, there is a minimum wage law, there is uh, there is a PF law, graduate law, which is to be, I mean, there is no, um, the, the, as an organization, we cannot deviate from that. We have to adhere to basic laws of the land. So these are policies which are originated and which are like, you know that there is no uh, not doing about it i mean you have to do you have to get those policies in place these are impl there are implicit policies there are imposed policies as well and appealed policies or general policies or specific policies i mean um, by imposed policy means uh, the at certain situation wherein things are going out of hand you have to get certain policies in picture wherein you know you ha the employees are asked to follow that rule uh, anyhow so these are imposed policies general policies comprises of leave 
maternity benefits, your PF, your gratuity. These are general policies. And specific policies like sexual harassment at workplace becomes a specific policy which has gained huge applause in the current industry. And, a, uh, and it has become one of the most important uh, law to be adhered by any organization today. So these are different types of policies. Uh, when we talk about HRM policies and their relationship with other fields, so why HR? I mean, as as we said, uh, HR policies are of prime importance. So uh, when we talk about their relationship with other fields, these fields become prime importance. Policies are related to health and safety. Uh, when we talk about health and safety in manufacturing units, uh, there is a policy of of doing drills, fire drills, and you know earthquake drills, so that every employee knows that in case of any natural calamity or in case of any mishappening that that can happen anytime, and what uh, what one needs to follow, so that becomes uh, a policy. So uh, when that is, um, that these policies are driven by a, an objective of health and safety. Uh, there are organizations who have a policy of conducting, uh, you know, health checkups for all the employees in three years time or five years time. Every fifth year, there has to be a health checkup. That is again related to health and safety because it's prime importance. Uh, welfare. There are organizations who conduct uh, various town halls or they invite uh, families of certain activities. So this is basically employee welfare. I mean, even by welfare, your group insurance policy or an accidental policy is also a part of employee welfare. Uh, social security measures or grievance redressal. The, I mean, uh, if you talk about grievance redressal, sexual harassment policy, which is a very strong policy in place in today's world, that comes under grievance redressal. So uh, the, every policy that an HR adopts has some relationship with all these uh, you know aspects mentioned here or all these fields mentioned here trade unions and employee association when we talk when, when we uh, excuse me uh, when we talk about uh, um, trade unions and all one second please I'm extremely sorry for this So going back about trade unions and employee association, um, I mean, when we talk about manufacturing units, uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, industry, uh, trade unions become of very prime importance because uh, in Indian context, trade unions still exist. And uh, when we talk about trade unions, employee welfare and uh, the wage management system really matters. So all the policies we have to, uh, adhere to the uh, norms or laws of the land. Uh, industrial relations, again, uh, when we talk about, again, going back to the same example, manufacturing units, when we talk about pharma, there are hazardous uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, chemicals that are used. And there is also uh, a lot of trash that is hazardous in nature. So how do you, uh, you know, uh, dispose this trash. There is a method to be followed because that again is a policy, and that every uh, that a manufacturing unit has to adhere to. Uh, and then comes international human resource management, wherein uh, since globalization uh, is has taken up so much of uh, pace in this world, uh, international human resource management becomes of prime importance. So uh, when we talk about international human resource management, remuneration there. Uh, they're you know coming down from a different part of the nation to and staying at a different location so taking care of the family taking care of your basic needs all these things comes uh, into in hr policy your know, how are you going to travel where are you going to stay um, and these all things are covered in hr policies so this is basically the relationship of hr policy with other fields so with this we basically cover our first uh, aspect of today's module, which was uh, human resource management, uh, introduction to human resource management. The concept uh, was made clear, HRM policies, and the relationship with the other field was covered. So now we've, uh, we would go and talk about managing global human resource management. So uh, 
basically what is a, a global human resource um, management i mean I, i'm sorry i went back to check whether how many participants i have in the class so hello everyone hi rohit shalu ruchi and rahul i'm glad to see you today here so in case you have anything that uh, you wish to i mean uh, talk i'm giving access to all of you so that uh, if you have any query so far you can discuss it right now so uh, i mean you can um guys you can actually type or uh, uh, or you can let me know uh, if you have any queries so far and you want me to go back and discuss something that is uh, taken care of in the module Okay, since uh, no one has any queries, so uh, we'll go up to our next uh, aspect, that is managing global human resource management. So under this topic, we are going to discuss about global human resource management. What is it all about? How do you implement uh, a global HR system? How is staffing take care, taken care in global organizations, specifically MNCs? And the basic challenges that an HR face in managing the expatriates. So if you see here, I've taken a few examples from the industry. That is, uh, if you go through the logos, it is PricewaterhouseCooper, the first one, Royal Bank of Scotland, McDonald's, Google, Zara. So these are basically organizations from various sectors. When we talk about Google, uh, Google takes, if just to take an example, is a global organization. It's an MNC. Whenever it hires any uh, employee or from any location, it takes it it takes only the creamy layer, and the work culture, the way they manage their employees, is very different from how Royal Bank of Scotland manages or how McDonald's manages its employee. So when uh, I mean this is what is being a global organization because. You innovate and you even take care of the employees in a very different way uh, from the normal organizations. When we talk about McDonald's, again, uh, they have a different set of menu in different nations. When we talk about McDonald's in India, it has a veg menu, whereas when in, we go to the same McDonald's in UK or US, they do not have a veg menu. Or when you go to Japan, they might probably have a sushi menu which is unique to the demography where they have they are existing based on the market may based on the um, various factors or personal likes and dislikes of the customers uh, so uh, global human resource management is also basically taking care of various uh, uh, employees coming from different uh, nations or different countries and working for you and taking care of their you know uh, I mean, giving them a work environment wherein they can adjust into a work environment because they come from a different culture or co come from a different background. So uh, go again, going ahead, what is glo global human resource management? Global human resource management treats the entire world as one large country and carries out activities to use its human resource effectively. So. Uh, Global human resource management includes activities like HR strategies, staffing, performance evaluation, management development, compensation, labor relationships, etc. So, um, I mean, uh, when we talk about uh, GHRM, uh, I mean, I've short, cut it short like global human resource management to GHRM. When we talk about GHRM, uh, labor relations, probably here in India, we have 
n number of rules uh, pertaining to labor safety or labor wage or um, you know labor health and safety however when you only go to us they might have a different policy or a different way that they tackle uh, their labor force so when you get a person from us to work in india you have to give the same level of uh, comfort so that he feels safe in the in current uh, working environment similarly when we talk about compensation in india there is a trend of a 30 day pay cycle or a 28 day pay cycle or 22 pay day, uh, 22 days pay cycle depending on the organization to organization so however when you go to uk uh, they have a 7 day pay cycle or a 15 day pay cycle wherein you need to pay uh, a particular uh, your employee wage on every 15th day so this is the difference and when you get people from different countries you need to cope with the different culture or the different way that they work there and you know taking care of them uh implementing global hr system adoption of global perspective basically when you wish to implement a global hr system in your organization you need to understand the global perspective by adoption of glo global perspective means uh, any expat coming down from say uk to india you need to take care of the different um, policies or framework or the culture that the employee is coming down from and you have to frame your policies in a way that the employee doesn't feel uh, uh hesitant or doesn't have any issues in adopting to uh, such situation um in the past uh, explanations that i've given we we are harping upon policies to make the employee comfortable because uh globalization is the mega term today it's a, it's a mega trend today and you any organization is not left untouched because uh, i mean most of the mncs come from you know globalized or developed nations and the policies that they have is far far much better than what we have or we adopt here in india so we need to uh, keep in pace because most of our revenue are coming from them you know most of our gdp comes from them up most i mean 50% of our gdp is basically from um, mncs so uh, when we talk about uh, gdp or when we talk about our na national growth uh, automatically as in an organization if we want more business or we want more revenue so we and our customer base is you know sitting abroad we need to adopt to their culture or we need to adopt to the way that they is they are comfortable working in um second point is when you uh, are defining or or developing a global hr system you need to identify the essential activities like how are you going to source your empl your employees from what are going what are the basic standards that are you that you are going to follow while staffing so this is this these perspective has to be kept in mind getting matching talent uh, basically when we talk about uk us uh, i mean they have a, a set of uh, you know um, Uh, standard processes in place when when they did they when they talk about a maintenance manager on the work workflow that maintenance manager has to have certain qualifications so when we when here when the pers when the organization has set up a manufacturing unit in here in india we need to take care of uh, you know same getting the same resources as the as per the organization's need or as per the standard processes or standard uh, competencies or skills required by that particular position has been set construct a career graph uh, i mean in india uh, majorly uh, we would agree that there are many lala companies wherein they do not take i mean they do not bother about the career development of any employee however when we want to make our organization a global organization we need to take care of the career graph of every employee because employee becomes a very crucial or a contributing uh, factor in an organization's growth so uh, when you look up at any uh, mnc or any global uh, organization you'll find that they have defined the career graph very uh, crisply or it is it is very transparent and very clear so a career graph is of uh, prime importance to any employee like 
if I join any organization, I need to know how am I going to be assessed or promoted or how am, how is it that my performance is going to be managed or tracked. So all these things becomes a crucial factor. Identifying leadership talent. Uh, when when we talk about going global, it is very important to identify those key resources which are going to help us move up to the next level and train them and assess them and take care of their strengths and understand where is the skill gap and you know uh, giving them the trainings and identifying such people so that your next five years pipeline of uh, you know good managers is in place. So you can, you know, uh, rather than taking people from outside, you actually empowered your own employees and push them to the next level. So the, the uh, next one is regular recruitment. Um, being a global organization, uh, you would have that sort of need of upcoming motivated and, you know, educated talent uh, with the right skill set from the industry. So you need to continuously have regular recruitments happening. You need to even do internal job postings because many a times uh, you might have identified in your career that there might be employees who wish to uh, do certain, uh, I mean, get into certain profession. However, um, with time, they realize that they do not lie. I mean, their interest doesn't lie in that particular work and they want to do something else. So uh, internal job postings plays a very important role because then if uh, there is certain thing that is of interest to me, which is available in my organization. I might not look out for a change outside. I'll try to uh, move on into the same organization, into a different role, into a different department based on my interests. Engaging and retaining talent is, again, a very important factor for any HR uh, the department who is working in any global organization because uh, today we cannot afford to lose out or we cannot um, I mean, attrition becomes a prime uh, a critical factor to be taken care of by any hr so we cannot afford to lose out candidates quickly because there is a lot of time and effort that goes behind getting the right talent and then uh, you know, once the talent is in place, you actually spend time or give that many manas for the talent to get adjusted to uh, the organization's uh, philosophy. And once he's ready to perform, you cannot afford that that employee decides to move out. Because then again, you are, you know, uh, I mean, if it took three months, you are again three months back and you'll again spend for the three months, which is a six month loss for you. So you cannot, uh, you know, go through that sort of uh, uh, phase. So that's the reason engaging and retaining talent becomes of prime importance. Uh, how is uh, staffing taken care of in a global organization? There are three ways in which uh, staffing happens, which is ethnocentric when in all key management positions are filled by parent company nationals. So basically, uh, 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 if we see, like if you talk about any banks, like Royal Bank of Scotland. So when we talk about key positions here in India, if they are opening and op organize operations in India, uh, the key positions are basically managed by their own uh, uh, you know, nationals from their uh, country. If, if they come from UK, the so major leadership roles here in India would be filled by UK employees or expats, basically. So that is an ethnocentric approach of any organization that keep filling the key positions of an organization by the parent company nationals. <clears throat> Second is polycentric, uh, wherein the host country nationals manage the subsidiaries, parent company nationals have key positions at the headquarters. So basically there is a divide wherein there it's a mix of uh, where the leadership roles has a mix of people coming from the parent company na company's uh, location and the host country location as well however the divide is very uh, clearly defined here wherein the subsidiaries are going to be managed by the host co country whereas the headquarter key positions are going to be managed by the parent company locations Geocentric location is the third one, wherein seek best people for key jobs regardless of nationality, wherein um, it doesn't matter for me if I come, if the parent company is from UK, if you get uh, a good CEO from your, the host country, please get the person on board. So here, regardless of the nationality, the 
key jobs are filled by the best possible resources from the market so these are the three basic strategies of staffing which is adopted in a global organization uh next is managing expatriates so who are expatriates an expatriate is an individual living in a country other than their cu- country of citizenship often temporarily for and for work reasons uh, now basically in india uh, there was a uh, word which we used to uh, you know talk about is brain drain uh, yes uh, 15 years back uh, when there was a hu- boom in it industry in india we india actually um, experienced a lot of brain drain happening wherein our people used to go abroad and settle abroad and work there in their organizations and basically this was a, a, a big shifting trend however in the current scenario things have changed now even the uh, uh, countries and organizations have realized that they cannot permanently relocate people from one place to other because of various reasons so uh, what they have done is that now on site has become a very um, uh, talked about term in any organization so today we get expats from uh, different locations maybe uk us london australia japan and germany or russia and even indians go and work in uh, different locations in different organizations and for a very short term so these people who are actually going from their native country to other country and working are basically called as ex- expats or expatriate so m- how do we manage an expatriate becomes very cru- crucial there are basic challenges when you manage expats uh, it a, a research study shows how a high rate of expatriate failures ranging from 25 to 50% mainly due to the culture shock that usually occurs within 4 to 6 months after arrival in the foreign country because you would understand that going from your home country and setting yourself in a different uh nation or a different country is very difficult because we come from a different background or a different culture uh, background and they have a different cultural background a different belief system a different value system so uh what is a culture shock culture shock is basically uh initially when a person or i mean if you take an example of a young it uh, engineer or a software engineer he is all uh, you know energetic and enthusiastic uh, enthusiastic about going and staying in amsterdam however uh, initial 2 3 months he'll be all excited with all that energy and vigor in him that yes i'm in a different country and i'm tr- getting to explore so many new things however in uh, another 2 3 months time like when he crosses four months or six months he realizes he starts missing his family he starts missing his friends because uh, it's very difficult to make new friends so easily uh, in a different country and uh, uh, you know there'll be a culture shock that will come into picture because uh, probably in like for indians specifically uh many of us are vegetarians and it, it they find it very difficult to find vegetarian stuff abroad so or it they they might even find it but then it might be a bit of you know heavy on their pockets so uh that becomes small small things uh, starts accumulating and that uh, and the candidate comes into a situation of culture shock so this uh, is a major uh uh you know a uh, challenge that any a global hr department faces wherein uh, there are many failures expat failures that happens so uh, family considerations like uh, um if uh, a person is married he would prefer his spouse to come along or uh, the kid to come along health and safety there are many countries wherein the health and safety standards are not up to the mark and we i mean when we indians also go there we find it difficult to cope up with the environment to cope up with their health and safety measures because here it is it might be far much better than what other countries have so uh, these are basic challenges the remuneration as i gave an example in uk they have a 15 day or a 7 day paycheck system and in india we have a monthly paycheck system so these are the basic cultural differences um uh, when we talk about cultural differences the recent trend that we talk is about uh, you know uh, accepting homosexuality and accepting you know uh, different different uh, you know uh, things so uh, basically it becomes difficult for an indian to adapt to these situations because we have different value system we have a different belief system that we've been taught from a childhood so these cultural differences comes into picture economic status um 
when we talk about economic status, the economic status of the country becomes of prime importance. Like uh, when I mean today, uh, even if uh, you are a global organization, you have an operation. Uh, you are oper you had operations in Syria, but now currently because of the economic and the current law and order situation of Syria, you you cannot uh, you know expect your employee to stay there and work for you because there there is a turmoil so all these things uh, accumulate or become a challenge for a global organization having operations into various countries today if you get a tsunami in chennai uh, your work gets affected all across because i mean or you know the, the flood that affected in chennai hindered many organizations because many things were, were I mean, uh, there were servers there, they had production line there, which actually closed down. So for a certain period of time, so that affects the performance of an uh, individual. And that also affects the person staying away from the, his uh, country and, you know, staying at a location which is hit by such uh, natural calamities. So basically this was all about global human resource management so i'll again come back to you and i would again like to answer a question if somebody has any question pertaining to uh, global human resource management and would like me would you, you like me to um, you know discuss anything further if not then uh, we'll go on to uh, the next uh, uh, topic of today's session which is strategic human resource development so what do you understand by strategic human resource development is what we are going to discuss so um, again this is my favorite topic because uh, it is all about business again so if you go uh, if you look at this slide it talks about what is business all about and in India uh, when we talk about business uh, we we generally idealize uh, Lakshmi and Lakshmi with a flowing pot. So business is basically investments, which is assets, operating costs, returns, which is top line, bottom line, growth, salary incentives, blah, blah, blah. So this is what business is all about. But we, uh, when we talk about business, we always talk about Lakshmi. So uh, business is a is bit beyond than Lakshmi. So, how I mean, in India, there's a there, there's a trend of uh, you know applying or putting rangoli in front of the doors on an auspicious occasion, or in certain parts of India, and on every day, on a daily basis, there are females who actually draw rangoli at their house. So, what is uh, rangoli? What is the importance of rangoli? Uh, if if you go back to scriptures, you'll understand. That Rangoli is basically made to entice Lakshmi to come home. So, if you relate this concept to business, Rangoli is basically a method or a strategy to entice Lakshmi to come into your organization. So, it becomes a very important um, term now because what in business today we do is we always talk about how are we going to get profits how are we going to get the top line how are we going to get the bottom line but we what we miss is why we want to do this or why do i need to become a market leader why because when and this is the loop when we actually try and understand why are we doing a specific thing we get to know how should we go about it if i mean if we talk about only um, like if somebody says that i want to get 100 crores so why do you need 100 crores? Because, uh, and then the person says that, you know, I want 100 crores because I want to buy a Ferrari or I want to have a big mansion. And so that becomes one purpose. So when you have the purpose, again, you will be easily diverted towards how. So when we relate it to strategic human resource management, uh, when somebody or when, when, when a CEO or a CFO comes and tells me that I need 100 sales force uh, in this particular product uh, market. So uh, my question is why? So when, when, they, when, when they answer my why, I get to know the purpose. The purpose is to increase, a uh, increase the market share. And when you wish to increase the market share, you need to have your sales force from various regions. So uh, automatically, my how comes into picture. Ki, okay, today, if I need to increase my sales force by, say, 10%, and 
the purpose or the objective is to diversify in the market then i need to need a diversified uh, you know employee uh, pool of employees so then my target is again my again the next question comes as uh, why diversified and which all locations so why diversified because i have a competitor who has uh, you know a market uh, share in tier 2 city or a tier 3 city at this level and i want to reach up to a next level so then again my when since i ask my why i come to know how now and since i need to increase my market share in my two tier or three tier cities this uh, this is going to be my strategy to get the talent pool and these are my competitors from which i can get my talent pool from so the, here purpose becomes of prime importance again so strategic human resource if you relate it you will come to un understand it again going back to the picture of lakshmi you can always see i've highlighted that there is a pot being shown wherein it is an overflowing pot wherein uh, you know uh, gold coins are you know rushing down so why is it that lakshmi holds a pot have you ever uh, questioned this to yourself uh, lakshmi holds a pot because uh, if you go back scientifically it is said that uh, any uh, the evidence of any um, civilization is 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 i mean if you talk about mohenjodaro or harappa uh, the evidence of the civilization was accepted only when a pot was found because pot is something that can be uh, that was thought by a human being animals couldn't because when we talk about animals if they want to drink water they'll go to the pond drink water and come back whereas in as, as in humans uh, we created pot because we knew that we cannot go to the uh, river or the pond every day and collect water humans are blessed with brains uh, by god and that is the reason humans have are of prime importance in any organization so when we talk about uh, getting lakshmi into the organization you need to get talented resources you need to get humans with who have the capability or the creativity to innovate your product or innovate your services so step 1 is imagination and step 2 is visualization or having a vision is what is of prime importance in making any business successful so if you wish to make any business successful this also implies to your hr department that you need to imagine and visualize that why this uh, particular step is being taken or what is the business objective of the organization and align your hr strategies to it so this is all about strategic human resource management if you go back to the uh, example that i've given recently in the past you'll understand this uh, definition pretty well that strategic hrm is an approach that defines how the organization's goals will be achieved through people by means of hr strategies and integrated hr policies and practices so uh, again organization goal is of prime importance it has been highlighted here that organization goals needs to be achieved by hr strategies in an integrated hr policies and practices you cannot have hr policies and practices which are not aligned to your business goals because then uh, you are you are going to actually divert the attention of your employees to a different objective whereas your organization objective is different so according to henry and petigrew in 1986 strategic human resource management includes the use of planning a coherent approach to design and management of personnel system based on an employment policy and manpower strategy directed by a philosophy so basically you need to have lot of you need to do a lot of planning and also you have you need to have an approach or a designed pattern or a process which is wherein you're going to employ manpower Uh, and you're going to have a philosophy or a value system or a vision and mission statement wherein your strategies are going to be aligned by it so that this manpower that you are hiring also synchronize with the organizational objectives managing hrm policies and strategies to some explicit business strategy again um, if an org as an organization i um after 2 years i wish to enter or re-enter into a specific market my hr policies and strategy should be aligned with it if today i am uh, into hardware and i want to get into software i am 
I, I wish to get into uh, application development of certain, uh, of, of certain level, my workforce or my strategy should be aligned with it. Ki, okay, today we are talking about hardware, but tomorrow we also wish to get into you know, software. So this is our long-term uh, objective of the business. So what sort of workforce would be required to fulfill that need is what I need to plan in advance and my policy should be aligned in advance. Considering people as a strategic human resource management for having a competitive advantage. When, uh, I mean, if you talk about uh, Google, uh, they, they develop their, pro their products on, on an everyday basis. Every fourth year, you get something new. Um, initially, Google, you, we never heard about Google AdWords five years down the line, but now today AdWords becomes of prime importance. Today, YouTube, we never knew that people can upload videos on YouTube and on as well, but then they, they, they are doing that. So this is a strategic human resource move that um, has been taken, uh, that has took place based on the objectives of the organization. Okay, so I hope this makes it clear about uh, strategic human resource management and what is the environment strategic human resource environment realizes that people can make or break an organization because all decisions made regarding finance marketing operations or technology are made by an organization's people so it accords the highest priority to managing people and tries to integrate all hr programs and policies with the overall corporate strategy so here uh, basically uh, uh, the strategic environment is basically something wherein an HR also participates in. I'm extremely sorry for the background noise. Uh, that's my baby. Uh, but how, I'm coming back to the uh, topic again. Strategic human resource environment is uh, basically an environment that is created by the human resource de de depart department of any organization to take care of uh, the business need or to take care of the business goals or objectives. So uh, if tomorrow I need 500 employees, so why I need 500 employees is going to be the, my first question. How am I going to get those employees is going to be my second question. And I'm accordingly, I'm going to plan and strategize right strategic human resource environment talks about uh, concepts like manpower planning so uh, i mean i remember when i was working in a, a transport organization manpower planning played a very crucial role because uh, again uh, transportation is all about uh, m you know uh, how you manage your time time is of prime importance because the vehicle is on the transit how many people are going to be used to manage that uh, you know product which is in the transit and the transportation uh, vehicle that is in the transit so uh, there we used to actually uh, uh, whenever we used to open a new branch in any uh, location that we used to become of prime importance because that whenever we open a new branch is going to hit our margins so uh, manpower planning becomes crucial. So this is again a part of uh, strategic human resource environment. Return on investment. If you are actually uh, having an HR budget of say X crores, so what is the return on investment? How much uh, revenue do you expect that this uh, infused uh, when you infuse new uh, manpower or new team into the into picture? What is it that you're going to gain? What is the organization uh, going to gain in return? budgeting hr forecasting this 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 all comes into uh, strategic uh, hrm hr cost learning and development cost attrition analysis these are few uh, uh, you know reports that uh, an hr department runs in order to get the clear picture of uh, you know how um, uh, i mean at what state is the human resource department in and it is a human resource de de department is not a revenue generating department right it is it is always considered a cost centric department however we can contribute in revenue generation by adopting to policies or strategies wherein uh, there is going to be minimum you know uh, loss of manas or maximum utilization of resources so that uh, in a cer certain amount of cost you are able to achieve whatever you want to so it is not directly uh, related to generation of revenue but yes we can always 
strategize or plan our policies accordingly so that it, our revenues or are not hit and we do not always become a cost centric uh, department organization hr and uh, as distinctive competitive in advantage uh, in today's changing world being competitive in the uh, market is of very uh, pri i mean so it's very crucial it's of prime importance because um, uh, if you talk about uh, iphones today okay they have created a niche they have created that uh, market uh, you know for themselves that people where people find pride in using that particular uh, product however it might miss on certain aspects which an which a samsung phone might have which an iphone might not have but they have a competitive advantage because uh, they have a different platform they are very innovative they come up with new things which not everybody has you know ever thought of similarly samsung uh, samsung has created a competitive advantage by uh, you know uh, innovating uh, screens their the, the, the they are i mean they are market leaders in the screen mobile phone screens uh, every organ every other uh, you know mobile phone organization or company that you talk about uses a screen that is provided by samsung so or manufactured by samsung so even if their mobile market goes down they are still a market leader they have created a competitive advantage for themselves so uh, in this i mean uh, coming back to the topic again competitive advantage refers to the ability of an organization to formulate strategies to exploit rewarding opportunities thereby maximizing its returns on investment so such strategies uh, when an, an organization adopts such strategies like apple or samsung uh, the hr department plays a very crucial role to infuse that sort of talent into the organization provide that sort of a training um, you know uh, facility to the current employees so that they can come up with innovative uh, ideas the second principle of competitive advantage derives from offering a product or services that your competitor cannot easily imitate or copy so here again if you realize uh, that when you talk about strategic hrm uh, and we are talking about uh, you know uh, getting into a particular um, area or market wherein no uh, your competitor competitor cannot imitate you is uh, is of very uh, is of prime importance then you hire such talent from the uh, from the market and uh, you even make sure that your policies with respect to uh, data security and intellectual property is in place so so that your uh, product or your uh, blueprint of the product or service that you wish to create a create an edge on is not leaked out of the organization so this is uh, basically uh, all about our uh, today's module uh, on uh, strategic uh, um, human resource management and uh, introduction to human resource management and global human resource management uh, further if you have any queries or any concerns with respect to the current module you can please uh, put across uh, your uh, you know um, views or your uh, comments on the uh, messaging panel here so that i can reply back to you or if you wish you can even uh, drop in a private message to me so um i hope um i hope i'm audible and uh, i this actually ends the session here so since the module has been covered so do, uh, in the next 5 minutes do, if you have any queries please shout
Okay, then it was nice uh, interacting with you people. Uh, however, we couldn't interact much because being on a virtual platform, it, this becomes really difficult. So uh, I hope to meet you soon. And in case you have any query, uh, you we can, I mean, always. Uh, oh, thank you, Rohit. Thanks for mentioning it was a nice session. Thank you so much. And keep in touch. Uh, and probably meet you soon in the next session for, of HRM. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day and have a happy new year too.